let's talk about a very interesting topic and that is politics of plant development now let's assume there is an industry now this industry plans to come up and sit in a specific location now when this industry is coming up in this location what would happen this industry which comes up would have to clear certain parcels of the land also there would be certain na native tribal people who would be displaced uh, there would be environmentalist who would raise the concern so the perspective of development varies from every person the industrialist who is bringing the industry or the economist who is planning to have an industry would say that this would bring development and indeed would be beneficial to the country those who are pro tribals would say that this would affect the displacement the livelihood and their native uh, culture those who are environmentalists would fear that there would be huge pollution to the environment and we would have to bear the cost for our generation as well as the next generation now in all this light what we call as plant development is a very different scenario why do i say so the simple reason is when we talk about development definitely bringing an industry is a development but is it a planned development if i have to relocate tribes if i have to cut forest areas definitely no because you are bearing a cost for it and therefore this development has to be planned that means in case the tribes are to be relocated whether they would be allocated another parcel of land do you have plans to establish forest area in a nearby uh, vicinity so whether those things are taken into account or not and a clear environmental impact assessment is done or not which explains through the leopard metrics that uh, this has implications on environment how strong how rigid to understand this planning commission was established in india now planning commission came after independence in india the idea was to have equal livelihood for men and women e ownership and control of resources the resources to be distributed for common good of the people and understanding that any economic system that comes into operation should not be only aiming at concentration of wealth rather it should be involved with production which is beneficial to the common people so whenever there are big establishments that come definitely political con contest start because one social group would weigh it against the other social group so one towards mining group one for environment one for tribals one for economists and all of them have their respective feelings their ideas their thought process associated with what they speak but uh, the the development to a businessman could be very different development to an environmentalist could be very different similarly development to a farmer to a industrialist could be further different and development in light of government's perspective could be again very different so whenever development is planned rights are to be protected these rights could be rights of the tribal rights of the common man rights of the farmers and to ensure that there is no unnecessary intervention of the economy in any of these cases so this development should not be left alone to the private actors but government should have a proper planning we can say ppp model which is public private partnership model in today's context is a good example and this was the idea which was laid down when the idea of development was propounded a liberal capitalist model prevails well in europe and united states a socialist model prevails well in russia but what about india being a mixed economy we have to have a model that suits the need of both the capitalist as well as the socialist and the main theme is to reduce poverty in case our industry is coming up it should be ensured that it provides ample job opportunities to the local dwellers the economic redistribution of money takes place it's not the concentration of the wealth in the hands of few capitalists also uh, we have seen the world over rebuilding of an economy was a great idea after 1940s and 50s great depression happened reconstruction of japan and germany happened and then there was uh, the growth of the economy after the severe odds of the uh, disintegration of uh, the the soviet union and then the further disintegration of soviet union later 
In India, Bombay plan was one of the most interesting plan that was brought and the idea was industrialists got together in 1994 and drafted a joint proposal for a planned economic development. This development focused on industries, economic infrastructures and economic investments and the idea was to have or make country independent soon after uh, the independence have a planning commission with prime minister as the chairperson of it uh, and understand this whole machinery. So the first five year plan came in 1951, the second after five years in 56, the third in 61, the fourth came in 66 and then there was a plan gap. Now this plan machinery had a lot of vision in mind. The first plan was mainly focusing on the needs of the common people, the agriculture. The second talked about more on industries and there was a plan and a non-plan budget in each of these uh, five-year plans that was laid down and these budget allocations were extremely important to help understand what would be the budgetary allocations for the next five years and the line of development that could be actually earmarked to the common people. So under the first five-year plan as I said uh, addressing the agrarian issues was a main concern because India had faced huge amounts of droughts and famines and therefore uh, people got hand to mouth for food there was food import which was happening so to bring country out of poverty uh, improving the agricultural sector was the main idea to improve agriculture what was important uh, investments in hydroelectric power projects creation of dams bringing in irrigation and this project was drafted this plan was drafted by k n raj uh, however it go uh, it went smoothly but in the earlier cases, it was a slow pace and then later there was increase in the national income. Uh, possibly people could save a lot, but the savings initially were very, very small. But later uh, the savings started to increase and the plan machinery worked under this. The second five year plan, as I said, focused on industrialization. PC Mahalanobis was the major proponent of the industrial model and structural transformation was the key idea. So government imposed tariffs on import of certain uh, products and the idea was this would protect the domestic industry. Now since the imports were very high, the tariffs on the imports was high, uh, there was a thirst for the local things to be uh, made and therefore domestic industries had a chance to grow. Uh, industries attracted more more investment in the second five year plan as compared to agriculture. So agriculture which was the key focus in the first five year plan shifted to industry in the second five year plan and then in the industry Kerala model was one of the major models that were propounded. However Kerala model was not a pro industrial model but had very high elements to bring in education, health, land reforms, equitable food distribution and poverty elevation which was a key concern post independent for India. Uh, also bringing in medical facilities to the masses, increasing the level of awareness and health uh, issues was another important aspect. However, any of these plan mechanisms that came into existence had their own controversies, be it agriculture or industry. Uh, we had one of the Gandhian economists like Kumar Pa who proposed an alternative blueprint that had more emphasis on rural industrialization. The idea was in the rural areas, agriculture is definitely a mainstay, but if industries are brought to rural areas, it could create wonders. Chaudhary Charan Singh from Bharatiya Lok Dal uh, talked about keeping agriculture at the center of the planning however he said planning should not be focusing only on the prosperity of the urban and the industrial areas rather it should focus on the farmers and the common population there was another segment of the society who focused on social and political powers and they said industrialists are the key drivers of the Indian economy and therefore industrialists should be given a key uh, importance. The same happened with the public and the private sector. So some were in favor of public sector, the others spoke in favor of private sector and therefore again there were controversies whether public sector should be funded more or the private sector should be given importance. 
is private sector totally aiming at accumulation of wealth and profit or the government sector also aims to bring in development and reforms so uh, salaries without account accountabilities created a new middle class in the private sector which was again a question by many of the industrialists many of the many of those in the public sector so this was another important concern so whenever there is planning it has to be planned as the chapter conveys but at the same time there are different views which mingle together and based on that the outcomes have to be taken into account so the outcome ultimately was that the land reforms as they were planned were not implemented on the ground political powers was confined to few land holding uh, land owning uh, people and this created a division a fragmentation in the society those who had the wealth kept accumulating it grew into big industrialists and those who were poor were reduced to misery and this created a great economic divide within the society so unequal development was one of the major outcomes of the controversies which we saw in the previous section and this created the segment of the population who was political politically powerful furthermore powerful also later many projects came in for example bhakra nagal project uh, hira kund project all of those focused on building dams irrigation providing electricity infrastructure was developed for transport communication facilities were strengthened road network was strengthened the idea was to overall boost the economy and therefore this economic growth could ultimately be a fruitful way of development now land reforms during that time were extremely important so one of that idea was abolition of zamindari now with the abolition of zamindari the idea was not only to release the land from the uh, few land owners but also to reduce the disparity that exists between the landlords and the common people also consolidation of the land was another important aspect and creating a ceiling how much land should be allocated to whom became important so it was not easy to turn these policies uh, which were on ground for agriculture for industries without a genuine action without a without a genuine support and uh, many proposals which were laid down were not translated into law they remained only on papers and this was again an important challenge how to bring them into law how to enforce them to common people so that the things kept keep going now as i said uh agricultural situation further deteriorated in 1960s it went from bad to worse uh india was growing food grains at a good pace till 1940s 50s and was able to stay above the rate of population growth the food production but slowly the population started to zoom but our food production could not meet the growing population and as a result there was a famine or a near famine situation which was created specifically in all of bihar nine states uh, were producing less than half of the output which was required food deprivation led to malnutrition and undernourishment and the intake the per capita intake of 220 2200 uh, per capita dropped to as low as 2 1200 per capita and also there were uh, states on the other hand like punjab which worked prosperously but on the other hand there was bihar where the situation as we discussed was extremely worse so bringing the poorest section out of this clutches was a great challenge and for that these uh, five year plans played a crucial role at that time we also accepted foreign aid and this aid mainly came from us now since the aid came from us the idea is the suggestions that were laid down by the country had to be attained but at this time it was decided that now self sufficiency self sufficiency in food production should become our self motive or the sole motive so self sufficiency in food became an important motive for india at that point of time now when the self sufficiency became a important motive at that point green revolution was given Uh, a way out and this was to reduce the external pressure to reduce the foreign aid the foreign inflow coming up and the gap between the rich and the poor could be uh, fulfilled by bringing in more production so the middle class could be brought at a better level now when 
United States pushed India to change the economic policy. It was mandatory for India. It became important for India to become self-reliant in food requirements. So to keep this in line, high yielding variety of seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, irrigation at subsidized price was given. And then irrigation actually saw a zoom production this zoom production during the green revolution two phases phase one and phase two had been remarkable it was not just the green revolution but under operation flood which was the pioneer for white revolution in india also created wonders where we had significantly higher number of production in the dairy field and a lot of cooperatives came together to work for it later in 1967 indira gandhi uh, brought in many changes there were new restrictions that were brought to the private industries 14 private banks were nationalized uh, the government announced pro poor programs uh, those were to benefit the local people between 1950 to 1980 the the economy was growing at a very slow pace of 3 to 3.5 percent there was high amount of inefficiency and corruption which was prevalent uh, public opinion lost its faith and the idea was that economy at this point needs to be revamped and this was brought through major pro program changes which brought in national brought in with which were brought in with nationalization of banks pro poor programs being introduced and uh, creating restrictions for pri private entities in india so those were some of the developments and these were considered as planned development of the time because in the light of the needs of that time uh, those were the best measures that could have been taken and this gave direction to the future development as well but still there is a lot that needs to be worked and a lot that needs to be improved in light of the development that has happened so far and what could be expected for the future we'll be covering many such uh, topics from ncrt uh, political science in the upcoming sessions stay tuned